part two, samples of student work and feedback. Uh, so the first sample here is basically just by a year eight student. Uh, and the topic was rhythm and rhythmic dictation. Uh, so the method of learning was simple, just a, a listening exercise. So a live performance, I would stand at the front of the class, clap a rhythm, and the students would fill in the status here, so just a template, a worksheet that I gave them, uh, with the appropriate rhythm notated here. So one through to ten, two bars in each stave, um, and basically just notating the rhythms as I clap. Now this caters to diverse learners by providing a live example. So music clapped in a classroom, a rhythm that they could hear in a live setting, and then notate on. Uh, and catered to students who have difficulty with musical numeracy at times. Uh, so recognising beat, pulse, rhythm, Meter and subdivision. Uh, the feedback I gave this particular year eight student uh, as, as follows. So one, two, three, four comments here. The first was uh, try writing in pencil first. Um, you can erase your mistakes and your work will look a little bit neater. Uh, so basically this student, although you probably can't see it, wrote in pen, uh, as many students in that class do, uh, and was able to correct their mistakes when they made them. So obviously that adds to the presentability, or takes away rather, the presentability of the work. Uh, second comment here, a little bit neater with the quavers just here in the sixth example uh, on the left. So again, if that was in pencil, we could have erased that, worked on it a little bit. Looks a little bit, little bit scruffy. Um, and then the third comment there, great work on writing uh, the correct rhythms for all ten examples. So this student got all ten right. I clapped ten rhythms and they, they got all of them correct. And I'm also so obviously very quick to give praise uh, when it's necessary. A lot of constructive criticism on here, a lot of constructive feedback. But obviously, you know, give praise when, when it's needed. And then of course the last comment, uh, try to space your notes out evenly across the bar. Um, so a lot of students tend to squish them all up top end or the back end of the bar, so spacing them out evenly. Um, in terms of the data we gathered from this, um, spacing your notes and mistakes written in pen was actually relatively common across that whole class. So students cramming notes up one end of the bar and or writing in pen, uh, adding to the presentability of the work, they were unable to correct their mistakes, um, pretty common across that, that whole class. Uh, the second sample here was by a Year 7 student, and the topic was identifying parts of music and musical terminology, in particular form and structure. Um, the method of learning was simple, a, vis a visual presentation, so taking notes on an educational video lasted about five minutes, and the students took notes on that video. Um, in terms of catering for diverse learners, this was a, a, another form of delivery uh, of audio and visual information, so another form of stimulus. Um, and it catered to students who absorb the information uh, on musical literacy in this case through spoken word and visual imagery. So those two stimulus together was quite, quite effective. Uh, the benefits to this were obviously that I was able to pause that video when key information, you know, pieces of information came up, I was able to pause that video, the students were able to take notes on that, and then we could discuss those points as a class. My feedback on this particular student uh, was as follows up here. So what is a phrase in music? Um, a phrase is a short musical idea. I said, well, good answer, um, but think about ways you can build on that. So, you know, what else is a phrase in music? You know, core idea is there, let's build on that. Second point was, you need more here. So basically to the question, what is form and structure? And the students written, form and structure is a section mixed up all together. So I'm not entirely sure what he's trying to get at there. Um, I basically said, need more here. Uh, based on our work on binary eternity, what is form in music? So what is it? Um, and is form and structure the same thing? So basically just getting a little bit more descriptive, building on their core ideas already. Uh, and of course the third comment, uh, how would you describe a section of music? And the student said, a section is, is when you put phrases together essentially. Um, and I've commented and said, yes, that's correct. But we need to add more, you know, some more to this. Uh, what is the purpose of a section in a piece of music? What does it, what does it, what's it do? Uh, and what makes it different from a phrase? A section, a phrase, what are the differences? So just, again, building on those ideas. The data we gave, uh, sort of gathered from this uh, was that almost all students in this particular class had difficulty defining form and structure. They couldn't really define what it was, even in spite of the video presentation. Um, most understood the basic relationship between phrases and sections, however. And of course, the third example, um, this is again by a Year 7 student, and the topic was recognising form, uh, so again, revision, and musical terminology, again, form and structure. Um, so the method of delivery was just basically a quick quiz, so nine questions in total, two here and seven here, uh, and just multiple choice. Um, catering to diverse learners by using essentially a very simple layout, so two choice answer questions and a very you know, simple set of examples. Um, questions were formatted in a very simple presentation, easily read and very easily understood. 
for someone who doesn't understand the concept. Um, this exercise relied heavily on students' ability to, ability to discern simple patterns uh, from, from the examples, and it came to students who prefer written examples over listening activities and audio samples. Um, so this was purely a written exercise, and it came to students you know, with that end. My feedback on this particular student, again, uh, just three comments here. The first, remember binary form is two sections, A and B. So this, this student got all, almost all seven of these correct, with the exception of number four here, uh, sorry, number three here. And my comment was simple. Uh, remember binary form is two sections, just A and B. Um, second, second comment here, ternary form turns around. We're, you know, we're big on using that particular, so ternary form turns. It's, it's you know, essentially a memory technique. Ternary form, turning, uh, it turns around and goes back to the first section A, B, A. So just a comment on that there, just to trigger the memory for later. Um, and of course the third comment, remember it doesn't matter how many times the sections are repeated, if the first section returns, again there's that word, uh, it's ternary form. So just three basic bits of feedback there. Now the data we collected from this, the majority of students actually preferred written questions on form than listening exercises through audio samples. So we trialled both. You know, different examples of binary and ternary form in different pieces of music. And then we obviously tried the written example here, and the results were better with the written example. And students um, obviously responded to it far better. So that was the majority of the students within that class. So that was the data we gathered from that particular piece as well.